Rupees are everywhere in the world of Hyrule. You can find them in the grass, by smashing up some pots, and many other places hidden across the world. However, for those of you who have played a few Zelda games, you might have run into one common issue, having tons of rupees but nothing to spend them on. Of course these games all have their fair share of shops, but most of their inventories consist of consumable items that can easily be obtained for free elsewhere. While the selection of useful and exclusive items a player can spend their money on is usually quite limited. A currency only holds value when the exchange of it can properly benefit the buyer, but if there's nothing useful to spend your money on, then where is the value? This is why I want to analyze the currency systems used across the Zelda games to figure out which games fall short in this area and how they could have been improved. In Ocarina of Time, you start the game off with one simple task, to find yourself a sword and a shield to exit the Kokiri Forest. After rummaging around the town for a bit, you may stumble across a sword by entering a hidden crawl space, but the shield can actually be found in the town shop for a price of 40 rupees. And in order to acquire this amount, the player must keenly search the entirety of the town through the various patches of tall grass, reward chests, and hidden areas in order to get their amount required. It's the game's way of teaching the player early on that rupees are critical to the player's success, and the more that they take the time out to explore, the better. And for the rest of the beginning segments of this game, I would have to say that the currency system works rather well. Items that can be bought soon afterwards such as the Hylian Shield and the Magic Beans can be very useful in the player's quest, and if the player spends enough time collecting rupees beforehand, they can obtain these items as soon as they are available. However, things all change when Link turns into an adult. You still get rupees just as frequent if not more frequent than when you were a child, but the problem is, is that there is practically nothing of importance to buy. In fact, there are only a total of 12 important items for sale in the entirety of Ocarina of Time that are vital towards the 100% run of this game. The Deku Shield, which is 40 rupees, the Hylian Shield, which is 80, and 10 Magic Beans, which comes to a total of 550 rupees. If you add the cost of all those up, there is only 670 rupees worth of important items that can be bought in this game, on top of maybe a few hundred more that the player might blow on the minigames, which is an extremely low amount considering that the player will on average pick up thousands of rupees across a single playthrough of this game. This practically makes rupees irrelevant through the middle and late game segments of the game, as the player will often obtain more rupees than they actually need without even deliberately looking for them, which completely eliminates the satisfaction of collecting them. Oh yeah, and I completely forgot to mention the wallet caps. The idea of having a maximum wallet size in a game is to encourage a player to constantly spend their money rather than just hoarding it, but when the game barely has any important items to buy to begin with, then there's a good chance that you'll be spending the majority of your playthrough with a maxed out wallet, which reduces the incentive to picking up a rupee to an absolute zero, a problem that Ocarina of Time is all too famous for. Fortunately, future games would improve slightly from the system in Ocarina of Time, but most of the flaws were still apparent. In games like Majora's Mask through Twilight Princess, there still are only a few important items for sale, but at least those games were a little bit more generous when it came to the wallet caps. Majora's Mask had a cool system where you could actually bank the rupees in your wallet, not only to store them for safekeeping, but also to unlock bigger wallets as savings rewards. However, the majority of rupee spending in games like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess didn't come from various smaller items that could be bought throughout, but rather from huge late game purchases that would sponge up your bank account. In The Wind Waker, most of your rupee spending takes place during the Triforce quest near the end of the game, and in Twilight Princess, most of your spending takes place across two donation style side quests that give you heart pieces and unlock one of the better items in the game, the magic armor. I guess this is slightly better than just letting the rupees go to waste like an Ocarina of Time, but it would have been better if there were several more smaller, mid game items to purchase to help balance it out. Having a few expensive items stored into the mix doesn't really fix Zelda's currency problem, but more so just covers it up. Fortunately, the currency system in the next 3D Zelda game, Skyward Sword, would undergo massive improvements to become the most balanced and consistent one of that time. For starters, there are actually tons of things to spend your rupees on in this game, like shields, pouches, stat altering medals, and gear upgrades that all make collecting rupees worth your while. Your base wallet size is still rather small, but you are given tons of opportunities to upgrade it through side quest rewards and normal payments, so you don't have to worry about filling up this way. Also, the prices for the late game items aren't ridiculously expensive like they were in the past games, with the most expensive one only being a mere 1600 rupees, which is actually really good considering that the max wallet size is 9900. 
This currency system works really well because the player who actually takes the time out to explore the land to find extra rupees will be rewarded passionately with great items that can significantly help them out on their endeavors. This all leaves us with the most recent 3D Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. Although it is a little hard to compare this game to the rest due to how the open world format changes things, I can still admit that the currency system in this game works great. There are tons of great armors and upgrades that can be purchased from all across Hyrule, and many different opportunities for the player to afford them. A lot of the smaller consumable items for purchase such as bugs, materials, and arrows are actually worth your money in this game, as buying them out removes the tedium of finding and collecting them from the world yourself. The game even has a secondary currency called Mon, which can only be used exclusively at secret shops scattered across Hyrule. Extra wallets and wallet caps are also no longer a thing in this game, but I honestly think that is for the best, as a monetary restriction in a non-restrictive game like Breath of the Wild wouldn't honestly clash very well. But with all of this said, what exactly is the point that I'm trying to make here? If we look back on the analysis of all 6 of the currency systems, we can see that each one gets progressively better and better. Majora's Mask improved on Ocarina of Time system by having more generous wallet sizes and a banking system so your collected rupees wouldn't just go to waste. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess made use of the larger wallet sizes by having high tier purchases to spend your rupees on. Skyward Sword corrected the system by adding a wide variety of items that were always available for purchase. And Breath of the Wild just had its own system that was different from Skyward Swords, but just as effective. However, just because each game has been getting a better and better currency system with each release does not necessarily mean that we can trust this pattern for future games. Only one out of the five classic 3D Zelda games had a satisfactory enough currency system, and despite all four of the other games getting remastered versions during or after Skyward Sword's development, none of those currency systems really underwent any significant enough improvements. Sure, remakes like Twilight Princess HD got the Colossal Wall added in, which allows the player to hold a whopping 9,999 rupees, but what good is that if there were no extra items added into the game to spend those rupees on? This is why I am really hoping that the future Zelda games don't suffer from the same economic issues as the previous ones, as these currency problems are one of the few minor downfalls of an otherwise fantastic series. But what do you guys think about this issue? Did you also have a problem with the currency system of these older games, or was it not that much of a big deal? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Also, while we are on the subject of rupees, my channel now has a merch shop set up, so feel free to spend some of your rupees to buy some exclusive Croton gear. The link for that can be found in the description below. Also, a huge shout out to my amazing Patrons and YouTube members who help support the channel. If you would like to help me out here as well, all the information for that will be down in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.